facade. That's introduction enough, no? Um, so, I want to share with you something that I made. Uh, actually, I just downloaded it and printed it out. Um, and it's really, really cool in many different ways. And I'm sharing this with people at the Maker Fair in Singapore. So, if you happen to walk by the Hackerspace booth right in the middle of everywhere, you would see, first of all, Roland and his giant antennas communicating with everything. Um, and right next to it, you'd see a little microscope. Uh, actually, first you'd see Darren's microscope, which is about yay big. And he had this, I mean, it was a proper microscope with like a camera on top, and it was heavy enough that you could accidentally trip over and break your ankle. Uh, which is, you know, what you normally expect in a lab. So it was really cool to see it in the middle of a makeup fair. That's my point. Um, but also we have this thing, which is, um, it came out of a 3D printer. So all I did to get up here and take some time uh, to bore you is <laughs> to print this out. Um, but you can see it's kind of Frankensteinized. It's got uh, bits and pieces that are made out of different colored filaments. Actually, this is probably now four different 3D printers that I've been playing with. Um, so some of them have different, you'll see later on. Has anybody done 3D printing before? <coughs> yes, yes, yes. Has anybody never done a 3D print before? Okay, I can highly recommend playing around with this because uh, you don't just wind up with like a keychain or a Yoda head. You wind up with something that is useful. Um, and possibly even productive and kind of cool. Anyway, so long story short, this is uh, a microscope, even though it doesn't look like one, and it was made on a 3D printer. And if you want to send it to someone, if you want me to send it to you, I just need your email address and I'll send you the file. <laughs> Thingiverse, exactly. It's, it is available on Thingiverse. I need Wi-Fi. I need Wi-Fi? No, 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 I don't. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So, I have all these tabs open, my tabs are my slides, okay? And then I'll show you this thing. Uh, what I want you to try, and I think I have enough time, is to see what this microscope actually does, and you can sit where you are and see it. Um, so, you know, you will need your phones later on, and it's a bit of a test to see how many people can connect to a microscope at the same time. But first, uh, this is what it is, it's called the water scope. And I have no affiliation with the company apart from I think they're doing some really, really cool work. There is a business model behind it. It is, um, just to get this out of the way, because I know we are in Singapore. Um, they do try and make money off of this by making uh, kits. And the technology behind this, this is a general purpose instrument. They use the technology behind this, make a specific purpose instrument to uh, build cartridges. And you buy these cartridges, you put a water sample in it, and you shove it into a box and it'll tell you whether the water sample is com contaminated or not. And it's designed for places that have just experienced some kind of disaster and you're not really sure if your water supply is safe to consume. Um, and because it's digital for the win, uh, you can <laughs> manufacture it locally. And what's really cool, what most people don't um, really consider when you think about something that is 3D printed is not just that it's cheaper and uh, digital, but it's, it, it, it didn't employ children in its manufacture, in a factory somewhere. You know, so it didn't have a mold, it didn't have a factory, it didn't have this whole process set up behind it. It wasn't made in batches, it wasn't put into a shipping container, it wasn't sent to a distribution center, it wasn't sent to a store, you didn't go and buy it. You made it where you needed it. So that carbon footprint is just like completely shortcut. So 3D printers are a very neat idea. And I hear they started in hack spaces. Coincidence? Hmm. <laughs> so Borderscope is a company that's trying to make these kits and they're making money out of it. That's the business model. Don't ask me about business. I know nothing. Um, so there are two different things. Open Flexure is what the project was called. They did exactly what I did. Is They went online. They found a microscope design, which has been there since before the Raspberry Pi was invented. And it was designed to use uh, little webcams. You know those webcams that you stick on top of your, your, your monitor screen? It was designed to repurpose those. You'd stick a webcam in, and then you'd be able to focus on a specimen. You'd basically modify the lens. You'd reuse the lens. You'd be very hackery and cool about it. Take a, $2, a $10 mic webcam and then turn it into something that was actually cool. 
but you still needed to plug it into a computer. You needed a USB cable or whatever and plug it into your laptop and then see it. Uh, what these guys did was that they took this design, they shrunk it down a little bit, made it work with a Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to show you later on is this working, but this is a Raspberry Pi. Who hasn't seen one before? Okay, good, excellent. So you know what the pie is and it's not something that's edible, <laughs> but equally delicious. Um, so yeah, so this is the thing that they're developing. I haven't seen the business C type thing yet, but the general purpose one is for everybody to download and use, and I suggest you play with it. There's a lot of different things you can, you can um, uh, do with it. Because it's open sourced, uh, you can change the design. For example, here what I've done is, I didn't like the fact that the light was so close to the specimen in this yellow thing. So uh, there is a design or a version, uh, sort of a branch on the GitHub, where there's a longer uh, leg. And you can just stick this in here, like that, and now the distance is, is greater, and to make it work, you can add uh, sort of condenser lens on top. So it's bits and pieces that you can play with, right? You can print this on a different printer if you have to, or a different filament, make it look cool. Um, so later on, try it. Also, I've tried to do this with a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is uh, smaller and cooler and cuter, I think. Um, and it works. Um, second clever bit, okay, first clever bit is that it's 3D printed. Second clever bit is that it uses a Raspberry Pi. The third clever bit is that it reuses the Pi camera and the Pi camera lens. So it doesn't use a special lens, it reuses the same lens. So what you do is you disconnect the lens and increase the distance between the sensor and the lens. What that allows you to do is focus on things that are very close. So it reduces the focal length, and so that's what you have underneath. So inside this is where um, your camera goes. It gets slotted in there. Um, and so it's a little bit difficult to disconnect and take out the lens. So of course there is a 3D printed tool that you can use to do that. It's part of the design. It's in there. Okay. So this is the GitHub repository. Look for OpenFlex or Microscope. And there are like a bunch of variations you can play around with. Um, I highly recommend you do it. Moving along. Raspberry Pi available on 12 Geeks. Quick plug. <laughs> also available on Cytron in Ringit. Uh, which makes you feel richer because when you convert this down, it seems really, really cheap. Get one of these and play around with it. Uh, put this up here because it is a little bit delicate um, when you separate the camera from the board. Like that. This is good. I did not break this. I had a heart attack the first time I did that. So you put this into the little jig and then remove the lens, and you modify it, and then you put it back in. The problem with this though is every time I stick it in there, it gets disconnected. Uh, so I'm still trying to solve that problem, so if you have ideas, feel free to jump, jump in. Um, but yes, this is uh, very hackable, so I recommend getting this. The price on this, I don't know why it's so expensive. Uh, this is version 2, which is 8 megapixels. You don't really need it. This is version 1. It's like half the price, and it's 5 megapixels. It does a good job. So, running out of time. Try it. Um, ooh, sorry, jumping ahead. Try it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, in order to try this, and it's a bit of a, uh, an experiment, I haven't tried it with so many people in the room before, but and before uh, you do this, I'm going to try it on the screen, okay? <laughs> there is a Waterscope Pi as a Wi Fi hotspot. So, what this thing is doing, the Raspberry Pi is doing, is it's creating a tiny little Wi Fi hotspot that you can connect to. Because <laughs> you can't look at the specimen unless you connect to it. And so you connect to it this way. I'm not gonna tell you the password yet. Alright, okay, okay. So I have here um, uh, a slide of something. I don't know what this is. I think Darren is a scientist. He'll be able to tell you, hopefully. Um, but something green on the middle of a slide. Uh, <laughs> that's very specific. Yes. 
can jump in with the science anytime. Oh. All right, what do you oh, see? Right. Oh, that, 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 oh, oh, there you go. That's what it is. Okay. So you use the toggles to focus. Nice. There you go. Oh, nice. Also, you can just tap on the on the thing in the middle, and it'll make it full screen, which is great. Wow. And now we can focus all the way. <coughs> Oops, I'm going the wrong way now. Okay. Well, this is I think the biggest I've seen this particular thing. Does anybody want to guess what this is before Darren tells you that you're wrong? It's a leaf. It's a leaf. It's a leaf. Yes. Well done. Who said that? You said that. I don't have sweets, but how? <laughs> You win yeah, points. Yeah, <laughs> yes. All right, and apparently, I think this is where um, leaves breathe. Is that right? It's a little like device. Stomata, thank you. Yes, these are stomata. I have just learned. This is how leaves breathe. I've completely forgot this. All right, try it. So, do you see waterscope pi as a list? And yes. yes. So the password is waterscope, not <laughs> microscope, <laughs> but waterscope. <laughs> All right. As soon as you're in, tap on the thing and see. You should be able to see exactly what I'm seeing on the screen, and it's getting lagging already. What's the ten zero zero one? Yeah, ten zero zero one. You seeing it? Well, you're recording. So. <laughs> you're definitely seeing it. Yes. Yes. You're seeing it, and so if you just hold it up, so it it, it live updates, doesn't it? Yes. Ah, oh, this is excellent. It's actually working. Yeah, it's working. Gabriel's got it as well. So um, imagine this in a classroom setting, yeah. Yeah. Where you have one instrument and everybody else is staring at their phones anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to show them something interesting. Okay, excellent, cool. Okay, one last thing before I am done bugging you with my voice. Um, I am now looking for a tardigrade. So if anybody can help me find one, that would be um, most grateful. That's what a tardigrade is. It is a water bear. It is the most adorable thing ever. Um, and I've been looking for it in water samples. Oh crap, I'm not connected to the internet anymore. I'm connected to the water. Okay, yeah, anyway. So look for YouTube videos and you will find a tiny little microscopic creature. I have learned from a scientist that this microscope is high magnification enough to be able to observe one using what, you're, what you've seen. Uh, and so I needed to find one. And I've, I've been looking at samples and I haven't found one yet. Until today. <laughs> So yeah, I got sick and tired of looking at tiny little drops of water because I have no idea what I'm doing half the time. I have no scientific um, rigor, but um, I am able to 3D print now, so ta-da! I love this. This is beautiful. All right. Uh, any questions? Can you try to move the slide? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Can you tell us about the awesome mechanism to move the slide? Uh, use your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it's digital. It's digital. No, I, no, that is an excellent uh, question. So um, the clever bit is the clever bit is um, in the design of the open flexure microscope. So this is a failed print. Uh, thanks to Hassan is here. No, um, at the bottom uh, of this this microscope. This is like the bottom slice. Um, it's designed to use the flexibility of the PLA. So these are flexible. You've got three legs that are flexible, yes. Uh, and each one of these uh, is connected to one of these screws. Uh, and so when you press the screws, the table where you put your specimen actually moves. You see that? And so that's what's happening. When you move the, the screw here, it's moving in one direction. This is left and right. Move the screw here, it's moving up and down. So you know you've got two axes of movement. 
And I've been told that this is surprisingly precise for something that came out of a freaking 3D printer. Um, you normally use something that is like a proper lab scale microscope that you need to protect in the basement of an air conditioned building which requires like wireless passes just to get into. Uh, but this you can, you know, have in any classroom. And if you break it, just 3D print another one. And, and this is 5 megapixels. The camera is 5 megapixels. Oh, wait, there's more. Because this is digital, you can take pictures, look. <laughs> <laughs> I took a picture, and now you can see all of the pictures that I've taken before stored on the microscope. So even if you don't have a specimen to see or to observe, you can always just recall back everything else that was in there. Is that a cockroach left the second one? Good guess, but no, it's a tiny little ant. I hate roaches, so... Yeah. It did. It is now. <laughs> It's harder, it's easier to observe tiny little creatures when they're dead. <laughs> In the name of science. Can you see bacteria? Uh, you can see bacterial colonies. Um, in fact, I think this is one of them. Oh, God. Individual cells? No, not individuals. I, I would actually, that's kind of how I wound up in this strange world of I don't know what I'm doing. Um, because I'm a geek, I have no idea what science is and what my cells are, but... <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I wanted to uh, try and find bacterial cells, and I was hoping that, you know, I would stick it in there and see all the bacteria I wanted to see in the world. But, turns out, you have to get them to colonize first. And I'm Indian, so I know nothing about colony. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Commonwealth human. <laughs> What was that question? <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, I, I did observe. Uh, you can also take video. Look. What's up, buddy? Is that his jokes? Yes. I practice in front of a mirror every day. <laughs> Look at that movement. You can see it again. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> you want to see it again? Okay, let's see it again. It's a water sample. It was in a um, water plant. Uh, plant pot. That's, uh, I don't know, some sort of fibrous, I don't know, could have been uh, mycelium, I don't know. Dust mite, maybe. Dust mite? Dust, it might be a dust mite. <laughs> so there are, no, there are no scientists in the room that can... So the best guess for what that little thing is running around uh, is a rotifer. I've been told that rotifers are in everything. I don't know what a rotifer is, you'll have to look at Wikipedia for that one. But uh, they, are, they, they move, and you can take videos of them using this camera. Oh, also, uh, since this is hackware, um, I have a little meter here that, that is showing you how much energy or power this thing is consuming. Is it upside down? <laughs> no, it's not, okay. So, five volts because power bank coolest thing is ever invented. Um, and it's using about 2.8 watts, 3 watts. It's hovering around there. And this is in spite of all of you guys being connected to it. Nice. So I think 3 watts for... 3B plus, right? 3 3B. Not the plus. So it's just still stuck on 32 bits. I haven't measured what it does with uh, the Pi Zero yet. And I haven't measured how many people can connect to it. That would be a fun experiment. <laughs> Anything else? Is that anyone or anything? So then the feathers. The feathers? Oh my god, no. I don't have that sample, unfortunately, but you we discovered pictures. this. Huh? You saved the pictures, right? On this one? No, it's on the other one. It was <coughs> on the 3B Plus, unfortunately. I've got two microscopes. <laughs> no, this one, this one creates its own hotspot. The other one connects to, like, my own Wi-Fi. Um, so, I didn't want to share my own Wi-Fi password with you. Sorry. <laughs> Let it never be said that Hackware doesn't have weird audiences. You need to change your SD card just pull it out. Valid point. But 32-bit, 64-bit, not sure. But yeah, no, you can't just swap them out. Can it be made cheaper? Um, well, okay, look. Um, yes, I think so. 
Uh, I think it has to do with the camera. The camera is quite expensive, but the Raspberry Pi, you can switch, you can drop down to a Pi Zero and it will still work. Um, you, I, if you replace this with maybe a USB webcam, uh, you might be able to reduce it even further. But it's just the Pi and 100 grams worth of 3D print. That's it. That's all there is to it. Pi and the camera, sorry. But for developing countries, that is cost more than like 40 bucks or 50 bucks. That's the most expensive. For developing Yes and no. Um, you're, you're, saying, you're considering the Raspberry Pi as part of the thing, right? I mean, you try, let's say you try to bring it to the rural area, you just try to bring it to the country. Is it possible, do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you do lots of these, then yeah, it's totally doable. Always, yes. The mass-produced ones are best. If you can get your hands on that, then you don't need it. Yes. You use that a lot, don't you? For checking your ears. Next hackware. <laughs> um, yeah, yes. Any hack to make it magnify more? Yes. Um, so on the um, uh, the GitHub repository, there is a lot of documentation. Recently, they've added the water scope stuff. So they've made a comparison across different uh, cameras. So the five megapixel one seems to be the highest uh, magnification that you get out of the box, as in if you reuse the same lens uh, that focuses the image onto the sensor. Um, if you uh, look at the other designs, they were designed specifically to uh, reuse the sort of lenses that you normally screw onto a microscope, like one of those lab microscopes. So if you happen to have one of those and you know, or spare ones lying around that you want to observe digitally, you can always print that version. It's just bigger. It, it has a bigger uh, space at the bottom, a cavity, which lets you um, plug it in. So you reuse whatever, you repurpose whatever you already have. Uh, to get whatever magnification. It doesn't have a light source, right? So you can't, uh, it doesn't have like a backlight? Or it does. So this thing has a, a light source. Ah, right? LED. Yeah. So the little LED uh, is also powered by the Raspberry Pi, <coughs> which is also kind of cool. Uh, but you know, it's a little LED, so you can put a little coin cell there and get rid of the extra cable. But the Pi is powering the LED. Um, this particular one has uh, a head for an LED on one side and a, uh, what's it called, a condenser lens on the other side? Is that what it's called? I don't know. I think that's what I read. Uh, but it looked cool, so I downloaded it. I don't have a condenser lens. <laughs> 